Long ago, the highest echelons of this world spoke of the traces left by the demon king in the great forest covered in demonic energy. Because of this, none of them could use it, because whenever they entered there, no one came back alive. So they had the idea of throwing those they wanted to kill into this forest, since whenever people cause problems, that would be the best place to get rid of them. Then, in front of this forest, a mother was crying, asking for her son to be returned, but the guard wouldn't allow it because the seed of darkness is sprouting in that child. The priests came to pray and then threw the child into the root, a place of exile where no one can survive, not even the highest geniuses, knights, or incredible wizards were able to. A place where criminals are cast using divine magic and if anyone managed to survive, their sins would be forgiven. But one day, a baby was born with the seed of darkness. Just his existence was already a sin. He was abandoned in the middle of the forest, alone, days later, hunger and cold struck this child. However, within his body, something like a seed grew in his heart and an energy emerged filling the child's body. And so, ten days passed and the boy was still alive, until a demonic jaguar appeared and took the child. From here the tragic fate changed and ten years later, that same boy grew up and was now hunting a rabbit. But the hunt wasn't easy, so he leaped over and finally managed to grab the animal and came saying to Ilaga that he caught his prey. And this Ilaga is the jaguar that took him that day. Ten years ago, she came swatting the paw on the animal, asking if Helmut got used to hunting, even though for now he can only hunt rabbits. Then, she tells him to look at this carefully because this thing is known as a nucleus and something that all demonic beasts have, and if you eat it, you will become stronger and increase your lifespan. So Helmut, not stupid, came saying that the hunt is his, so he eats it, but wait, hold on, why can't he since this works only for demonic beasts and if he eats this here he will become one and have to be stuck in this forest forever. But he says that even if he doesn't eat it, he'll still be stuck here anyway, and since he's still weak, he can't leave Ilaga's territory, otherwise the other beasts will hunt the protagonist. But Ilaga says he can leave here because someone said it's possible, and that was a human she had known long ago and as many years have passed, he must have died somewhere in this forest. Smart Helmet asks if he wouldn't have survived, she said he was strong in the past, but humans age and become weaker especially in this forest because of demonic energy, and he just doesn't feel it because he has the seed of darkness. But he kept insisting, asking if she had found more people here, and she just kept swatting his tail because she raised him until now and he already wants to disappear off the map. After more and more insistence, she revealed that the place where that man lived was in the east of the forest. So, Helmut ran off happily, thinking of finding another human in this forest. Up ahead, there was a strange place surrounded by wood. So, what to do? He jumped the fence and found a little house in the middle. And this is something only a human could do. But, at that moment, Helmut's head was thrown to the ground, with the guy asking who he is. Helmut began to say that Ilaga had said that in the east lived a human, and he came here wanting to leave this forest. So, he asks why he wants to leave here, and says that in the world of humans it's not a beautiful and peaceful place like he thinks, since humans are weak and don't have sharp claws or teeth. However, they are more cruel and cunning, wanting to dominate everything. He came telling that he wasn't born in the forest, but was sent here as a baby because of the seed of darkness. The guy was even surprised because those born with the seed are killed on the spot, so he might be from some important lineage. And because of that, he says the reason he was left in this forest is because of that seed of darkness within him, and as long as he has it, he'll be hunted, even if he leaves the forest, and will probably die fighting other humans. But Helmut says he still wants to go. So, the old man came grabbing him, because first, before going to the world of humans, he needs to become one, and he's saying that to leave here he needs to cross the forest barrier. But for now, he can forget about that, because he needs to get strong, or else he'll just go out and die there, and that's why he'll also teach the boy. So, at the house, Helmut was complaining about the dirt, while the old man was saying that would be his bed, but no laziness, because we still have a lot to do, like wearing clothes for the first time in life. And now they're going into the forest, because he'll learn what he can or cannot eat inside the woods. So he started talking first about this organic root that even though it has demonic energy, you can purify it with water and eat, and then Helmut was impressed because he didn't know that plants could be edible. After all that, he ended up having to go fetch water, right at that moment Ilaga appeared, giving him a slap on the ear, because he's listening to that human, even though he didn't even listen to her. But it turns out he said he would make him strong so he could leave the forest, since nothing interesting will happen if he stays here. So, he was leaving, while Ilaga thought he would have a good life, but that good life wasn't today because Helmut is sitting there on the ground, hands in front, because from today on his training begins, the old man was thinking that this boy is different because he was born with many things besides the seed of darkness, and that's why it's worth teaching him. Now, after some time, he finally passed out on the ground, saying he was hungry. So the old man made that vegetable soup, and Helmut was fascinated because the stuff was too good. A moment later, he started saying that since he's not a demonic beast, he doesn't have sharp claws or teeth, besides, 
the human body has limits and that's why he'll teach Helma to use a sword starting tomorrow, but before that, he'll show what a sword is. He grabbed one and swung it sideways, the moment he went from top to bottom, the cut split the rock in half because that's how humans survive, and this is called vis, just as beasts possess demonic energy, humans have an invisible source they can use, although his seed has different properties, it's still a similar power. So he got excited wanting to learn that, but only got a flick because his body isn't prepared enough. And so, the most important thing is for him to understand the sword even if it's difficult and distressing, he must move forward and not give up because the sword will reward his effort. So, a few days later, Helmut was throwing a tantrum because the old man was complaining about his posture. But anyway, the more he observes Helmut, the more he realizes he's a strange boy with surreal growth. Even though the seed of darkness influences humans and makes them act violently, however, contrary to everything, this child is clever, besides not giving up easily. And because of that, he started giving him some sword strokes, asking if he understood the difference. And since he didn't understand anything, the old man starts saying he's going to miss dinner. At that moment, he said he was starting to understand why the amount of damage was different, besides, the speed and the places he hit were different, even though it was the same movement. The old man says that mimicking the external appearance is not enough, he must understand understand his whole body connected with the mind of the sword, having all this under his control, and that's why he must dedicate his heart and soul to each movement. So he got excited and started swinging his sword until later he went to the riverbank thinking he's going to rest, even though it's boring. At that moment Ilaga came behind, saying he grew a lot in this short period of time. So Helmut asks what debt this is that the old man has with her. And actually, that human wanted to live here and she gave him a special permission for that. And he even jokes saying she doesn't like living with anyone and left him here without even fighting. But she is the owner of the forest and no matter who disturbs her, she will fight anyone, only thinking well, maybe not everyone, since she was being cautious not to be attacked by that snake while fighting. And that's the snake that stays in the southern region of the forest, Naho. She was wanting that human who lives here and if she got tired fighting, the snake could come and finish them both, since she's not sure how strong the old man is because demonic beasts expose their energy, however, humans naturally hide it, and Naho herself doesn't like that human because he destroyed that horrible region she had built. Then he was wondering what horrible region that is, so Ilaga grabbed him and ran through the jungle, getting there, that was a human farm, a place where humans work based on the whipping of other humans, and that other group are the females, human women, something he had never seen before, and they're going into that cabin to pass by for the cabronas dinner time, because she loves eating human women for their soft flesh while the males work for the rest of their lives, and that's why this place is a human farm. And that bald guy who seems to be causing trouble, actually, they're all bald here, must be some kind of requirement, but he's the only one wearing a cape, and he's kind of the leader of this place because he's good at finding other humans who were thrown into this forest, and if Helmut had bad luck, he could have been one of those. At the moment they were leaving, a voice came saying, well well, who showed up, and this is none other than the snake Naho, the owner of the human farm, and just by feeling the pressure of these two, Helmut was already quick down there, while Naho says she likes to eat humans in their youth. But Ilaga just says no thanks, because she doesn't eat men either, she actually eats those with soft flesh, smelling the air. She already asks Helmut what he is to dairy in. For those who didn't know the name of the old man is Darian. Ilaka just throws a kick at the snake because she's putting her dirty face here nearby, while she says she smelled that bastard, because it's only been a few years since he came and destroyed her farm, and Ilaga was saying that the boy stole the old man's clothes and if Naho dared to touch a hair on him, she would be torn to pieces, and that's how Naho just told her to leave her territory. And not long after, Helmut passed out and Ilaga picked him up and brought him back, telling him to be careful from now on, and that's why he needs to stay close to that old man, because no one knows what that snake can do, but then Helmut just stopped and asks if he can get as strong as her and the old man, so Alaga says that's a level most humans can't reach even if they try their whole lives, and that's why it won't be easy and if he wants to leave this forest he needs to give his best to get stronger. And so, when the old man was coming, Ilaga says goodbye and leaves while the guy calls him back to the cabin. Until at night he was dying of pain, it felt like his stomach had a hole because earlier the old man told him to eat this before going to bed, and this was nothing more than poisonous herb, and he was supposed to eat it without complaints because it would help suppress the power of the seed. So he continued to grumble in pain because it seemed like he was going to base himself here, while the old man was at the peak of one of the mountains thinking about five years or four years. Then the next day Helmut was swinging his sword non-stop, until he turns to Diren saying that he's been feeling his body lighter these days, and that's why he wants to know if it's because of the poisonous herb, but maybe it's the effect of the demonic soil and as it hasn't hurt in these past few weeks it seems it's about time. So he comes grabbing a piece of wood talking about this, the power he can't see, and he hadn't taught about it yet because his body wasn't even at the basic level, 
only now his body is ready to accept the vis, so from now on he'll learn the vis training method. He came pulling the piece of wood exuding energy telling him to feel it in the atmosphere until he could control and incorporate it into his sword and that's how he should do it now. And so Helmut grabbed his sword while the old man was telling him to take a deep breath while fighting because he must absorb the energy of nature, so think simple and move with composure and if he loses the vis his body will break first. And so their fight began while Helmut grumbled about how fast he's coming and then he stopped in that breathe breathe and went up with the old man defending all the moves while saying to use the senses and absorb more energy and that's why they'll continue training like this from now on. And so even though it takes time, Helmut was supposed to show his will. So with each sword crossing the old man told him not to lose the rhythm and control, until four years later Helmut finished cutting a tree with just a wooden sword, while the old man said that after four years he's doing very well, and then he tells him to show the vis. But he says he doesn't want it because last time he showed it Dai Ren refused to fight saying there was nothing there, only that he ended up gathering his vis through the sword, while the old man thought he has an incredible growth because besides the seed of darkness he's still very talented, and that's why this boy will surely turn the world upside down whether for good or for evil. So it seems the time has finally come for him to leave this forest, but Helmut says he's still not strong enough, but if his seed grows any more than this he won't be able to pass through the divine barrier so it has to be now. He explains that the human world is beyond the south of the root forest and to get there he needs to pass through the divine barrier, since in theory he can pass through there and reach the human world even with the seed of darkness because a human who can weaken the barrier should be able to pass, and the old man doesn't know exactly where because he's never tried to find it. But someone found it, the chief of Arugo village, that same bald guy in a cape from the human farm, and lastly, he will experience countless things in the human world, but tragedy always creeps in. And when that day comes, he will feel despair, possibly reaching the depths of darkness, but under no circumstances can he lose himself, and that's all he asks. And if he has nothing else to say, the old man is going to take a nap, but he should come back in the morning because he has something for Helmut. And so, at night, he ended up meeting Ilaga, all pensive because he's finally leaving this place, but it's a complicated feeling, Ilaga just says that this is proof that he is slowly becoming human. Then, the next morning, he arrived at the cabin, but when he opened the door, the old man was just sitting there doing nothing with a sword and a bag in front of him, and seeing that, that feeling hit him that it really is time to go, and that's why he'll remember Dai Ren forever, his master. Outside, Ilaga says his lifespan has come to an end, and he shouldn't make that face because Dai Ren lived and died as he wished, and also now it's time for Ilaga to give him something because he was wearing this when he was left here and maybe he might need it because it's a medallion made of pure gold, and inside it was written, may there be light on your path, Margaret Irene, and that probably probably must be from his family in the human world. And also as he goes to the farm she says that the cursed snake is hibernating so if there's no big commotion she won't wake up. But even so if Ilaga enters the territory she'll feel it so he should go alone there because this is the only chance. So Helmut started to leave telling Ilaga to take care of herself and not to die. Then, at the human farm, when the chief was turning off the light to go to sleep, Helmut just appears with the sword at his throat telling him not to move. Then he started talking about dark magic being an evil power that can even make a weak mage strong, and among several mages there are people who go beyond the limits they shouldn't to gain power, and Arugo was one of those mages who was always jealous of others and dreamed of becoming the strongest, so he chose to become a dark mage and through illegal activities with humans he obtained the necessary materials. The suffering and fear of others made Arugo increasingly powerful, but because of the persecution of a certain mage his atrocities were exposed and he was sentenced to death or exile. To avoid death, he chose the root forest where he eventually found the two-headed snake and that's where he got permission to stay in her territory in exchange for getting submission and sacrifices, so he used magic to gather exiled humans making them submit to Naho, and that's how the human farm was created. Arugo became the king of the farm while the other humans were treated like cattle and Naho never interfered with his work as long as he continued offering sacrifices, so while following the snake he became ambitious again, but every winter when Naho hibernated the demonic beasts attacked the farm every day, but even in these crises he still had some satisfaction from this life, until now returning with the sword at his throat he's asking what Helmut wants, and what he wants to know is how to get out of the root forest, the bald guy just asks if he's Dai Ren's disciple, but that's none of your business and if you don't tell me you're screwed, my friend, and he even tries to say that if he dies Naho will wake up from her hibernation, but he'll die too if that happens because Naho can't revive the dead, then he said he's the only person who knows how to get out of here, so if he dies there'll be no way out, but Helmut, smart, already heard that mages are good at recording things, so if he dies just search the house and he'll find something. And now, finally, the bald guy said he'll tell him how to get out of the forest. So he went down some stairs to the underground while he was saying that the method he discovered is only theoretical because no one has tried it or has the skills to try it, and the only person who might be able to do it must be Dai Ren. So, since he's here, it means the old man has no intentions of leaving this place or he's already dead. Then he picked up a book, but before handing it over he's inviting Helmut to become his successor and live in this place because as he's Dai Ren's disciple 
he must be strong, unlike the others, but anyway he just wants the book to escape this forest. Then the bald guy said this is a book he found in a mage's hideout before living in this place. Based on this book, there's a huge waterfall on the southern border of this forest, where water and demonic energy awaken divine power at the same time, and so you may be able to pass through the barrier there. But of course even though it's weakened it's still a high level divine barrier and anyone who fails will have their body turned to ashes. And that's all the bald guy knows. Even though he doesn't like the guy here, he remembers Dai Ren saying not to treat lies as unimportant, so he just punched the bald guy in the stomach and tied him to the pillar while he kept jabbing him, saying he'll be released after some time. And then the old man started shouting because his magic wasn't working, but Helmut just left, saying he's going to leave this forest. But not satisfied with the beating, the old man used some crazy magic calling Lady Naho, and so the snake lady woke up from her hibernation asking why she was called. The bald guy says it's urgent because Dai Ren died and his disciple is here, so Lady Naho was happy because this is finally her chance. While Helmut was running through the forest, he ended up encountering the company, the demonic beasts led by Naho, and feeling that pressure he sees that he can only run, until in front he already feels demonic energy everywhere. At that moment, Lady Naho appears saying she has been waiting for this moment for so long and can't let him go. So, for Helmut, in this case, they'll have to go through her dead body, and so she came to fight, but Helmut dodged the attack, and now with all this dust he can't see anything, until she appeared surrounding him with her body, while Helmut stopped to think calmly because his opponent is strong, but he won't let things go her way. Lady Naho started to do some kind of power from her mouth and threw it at him, and when the power was coming he took advantage of the opening to move towards her mouth, but she sent her tail in that direction, but still he kept running over the tail, because no matter how strong Naho is, she has a weak spot that he can attack using this. So he already came slashing right into the snake's eye, and as she is distracted now it's time for him to get out where the situation can get complicated, but at that moment Lady Naho ate her own head and came towards Helmut colliding powers, but when it exploded he ran away without her even seeing. Some time later he was all beaten up hiding in the forest thinking that the snake is really very strong, and when he was leaving, she appeared behind him again because he can't hide inside her forest. Then, when she came up with her big mouth and all, Elaga appeared to confront Lady Naho, she told him to get out of here because now they are going to fight, so he should seek his freedom. That's how Helmut left, while the two of them were already facing each other, with Elaga saying she won't go anywhere. And now on Helmut, who after finishing passing through Elaga's territory, ended up running for two days, so he only has one chance, he must be able to get out of this forest through those two. And this place here in front of the waterfall is very different, because you can hardly feel the demonic energy. But at that moment, feathers start falling from the sky because a giant bird arrived asking what business he has in her territory, and this one is Igrel, the ruler of the north. Ilaga herself had already said that she is someone curious about things. Smelling him, she asks if he belongs to Naho's family or Ilaga's family, and as he belongs to Ilaga's family, he would be invading her territory. But the prepared boy says he's here for his own reasons and what he's going to do now could be very significant because she may satisfy her curiosity since he'll be the first to cross the barrier and leave the root forest. And then she laughs asking how someone weak like him could do that, and if it's not now, she won't see anyone else trying to cross this divine barrier because there will always be humans being thrown through this forest, but the only person who can pass through the barrier will be him. So she ended up making an exception and wants to see him try to cross this barrier, and so she will protect him until he reaches the barrier, regardless of the result he should tell Elaga that he survived and managed to leave the forest. Then he dived and went towards the waterfall from below because he needs to go beyond the root forest, since divinity is the power of purification that protects humans and rejects negativity, and now this power is penetrating inside him with agonizing pain that he has never felt before. Until in another place there were some people going by cart, not exactly by cart because only the supplies were in the cart, the drover was saying that it's better for them to rest to travel faster because if they encounter an exhausted demonic beast they'll be screwed. So the blonde one was supposed to go get water for them before it gets dark. When he arrived at the river to get water he only saw Helmut all beaten up on the ground and ran away looking like he saw a ghost, arriving at the people he said there's a corpse in the ravine, while everyone thought it was a joke. The woman in the hat went with him to check the situation, so there was indeed a body down there but hold on, it's not a corpse because he's still breathing, and when he regained consciousness there were a lot of people around him. The woman says the guy here went to fetch water and found him beaten up by the river and asks what his name is, but anyway, this is Tanya, a rank 3 mercenary with a silver medal from the face of mercenaries corporation, while Helmut was still impressed because these are other humans. She came saying they're in the rotten forest. As for Helmut, he says he only remembers his name and how to use a sword. After that, Tanya says she'll help, and for now, he'll be her responsibility. Sometime later, Helmut was thinking he barely survived and so it will take time for him to fully recover. Right now, his body is in a weaker state than when he started training, 
and the seed he thought would disappear is still there. Anyway, since this is the world of humans, they can't find out he has this seed, so he'll pretend to have lost his memories and try to find the owner of this pendant. But to do all this, they need to take it one step at a time. The next day, the guys were impressed because his appearance changed completely after taking a bath. One even asks if he didn't come from a noble family, while Tanya asks if he's feeling better. The blonde takes the opportunity to ask if she became so cool because the guy was actually a hunk, but why did he say that, he just got slapped twice in the face. Then she says they arrived in a village in four days, so he should endure the journey as they'll take him to a doctor and so everyone started getting their things to leave. On the way, the short guy found him strange for liking to pet the horse and saying it's a very docile organism, until some time later Helmut was running out of breath. The other tells him to get into the carriage, but no, he'll keep going because he should get better if he keeps walking. In town, the doctor ended up saying there's nothing particularly wrong with him, while Tanya was freaking out asking if he's a quack for giving such a diagnosis, and anyway there's nothing wrong no matter how much he examines him, so we just gave him a medicine and said the memories will probably return naturally. Outside, he tells Tanya he's feeling better, while she says his body is quite firm and since he knows how to use a sword he must have trained with some master, and in this case she comes inviting him to have a duel as a way to warm up the body since they have nothing to do tomorrow. In Helmut's thoughts Tanya is a rank 3 silver medal mercenary, a highly respected caliber in this world, and that's why he accepts to see how strong his body is recovering. So, in the arena, everyone was training, and when Tanya arrived with Helmut, everyone was telling her to go easy on the kid, but they just got punched in the face saying they'll duel using wooden swords and the only rule is that they'll fight until one of them falls to the ground. And at this moment, Helmut's body is still not in its best shape and he can't use this, so he just needs to confront her while redirecting the attacks. Then the duel began with him coming up and her defending by sending him back, on the next one he managed to dodge to the side but ended up taking a kick right after in the air. Since his body still can't keep up with his movements he feels like he's fighting underwater while she comes attacking as he defends until now she hit an opening and sent him flying because the victory is hers and she even said he was very decent and fought well. Until another said Tanya is an amazing fighter even among mercenaries everyone started patting him on the back and this one in front introduced himself as Fien, the captain of the mercenary group and a gold medal in rank 2 and he was saying Helmut passed the entrance test because since they saved him they didn't want him wandering around without memories and that's why they're thinking of keeping him until then and that's why they watched Helmut from afar before arriving in town and also he didn't come on to his sister like other young men. And that's how he received a rank 4 mercenary contract and now everyone came to greet him while he asks the captain how long he'll have to stay in the mercenary squad, in fact, he has total freedom to leave whenever he wants, but if he starts a mission he must move until it's finished and that ended up being a good thing for Helmut who still didn't know anything about this world and he'll also find out what allies are. In the room, the old man said that this isn't a mission for a rank 4 to participate in, but the captain said to trust him because the boy will be useful and since it's last minute, he'll only pay one third of the price of that rank 4 and also the Tariq mercenary squad will join this mission. When the old man left, the captain said that tomorrow's mission is a large-scale convoy, and even if they're ambushed, only rank 3 should fight because the monsters are very strong. One of the men said that if the Tarek squad tries to insult them, it's just to ignore them, as they also don't have a good reputation with them, and since the meeting ended, they'll meet again tomorrow morning, while at night Helmut was at the training ground thinking about the duel earlier today and that his body still isn't fully recovered, but that's not a problem because he'll start his training as he did the first time. The next day they were all together in the forest, reaching the cargo they have to escort, and so old Millis said that the face squad was supposed to take care of the rear guard, while the blonde said those guys on the side must be from the Tarek squad, and the guy himself asked what the skinny one is looking at because he's so skinny he probably doesn't even know how to hold a sword. In Helmut's thoughts, comparing his strength to that of the opponent is the same for the demon beasts and that human probably isn't the leader since he's not that strong, but anyway, it's good to keep an eye on him. A few days later, that same crazy guy ended up knocking down our skinny one, saying it was just an accident and also that guy on the side looked like a girl, but Helmut just ignored it and picked up the skinny one to leave. While this crazy one is pissed because he was ignored again, because he's actually a rank 3 who was temporarily demoted since he injured his arm, and also there's his brother thing who said that if he starts trouble again he'll be expelled, so he decides that the guys here will have to help him later, in the squad, the blonde was pissed because barely 3 days had passed and those crazies chased him every day, so he took the bucket of water and went angrily to fetch water by the river. Down there when he got the first bucket, the guys appeared behind calling him for a little chat, and after a beating, he asks if he already took a bath with his friend there, but actually they want to check if he's a guy or a girl now, and so they went to call him over. When he arrived seeing the situation, he thought that this must be the kind of person Diren said not to trust, 
The man ordered everyone to go up and take off Helmut's clothes, he was getting his sword ready, but it wasn't possible because Tanya arrived breaking the first one's face, asking why the Tarek squad was bothering her members. The leader of the failures just said they were having a conversation, but Tanya said it's better if there's no other incident where they bother her mercenaries, because next time it won't end peacefully. So, when night fell, Helmut went to train in the middle of the forest, and now his body is much better as he focused on healing for a week, but he still isn't healed enough to use this. Then, at dawn the next day, the captain said that in this region they're entering, there are many appearances of demon beasts, so they should be careful. People then started speculating about the appearance of the demon beasts, until in front one of the guys was complaining about having to go fetch water, but at that moment his head was gone because a demon beast appeared. The first one was pissed because it took his partner and went for it, but to do that he just took a kick and left, because this monster is actually very strong. So now the two squads are preparing for the battle, while Helmut and the skinny one went to hide under the carriage, and since he still can't use this, it will be very dangerous if he tries to fight too, because he feels that this monster is very strong. And so the battle began, the rank 2 guys went up surrounding and striking him with their swords, while the rest of the guys took care of the weaker beasts. The fight up front was insane because the rank 2 mercenaries knew how to use this, but anyway, they're even stronger than Helmut thought, because the leaders are keeping the leader busy and the others deal with the smaller ones. However, at that moment, the monster stopped fighting and fled into the forest, and by order, nobody was supposed to follow it, since the mission was to transport, not subdue. So, the blonde went to ask Helmut for help because he couldn't get up, and they also said they would take care of the beast's bodies because, according to the guy there, their skin and the seed could be sold at a high price. He showed what a seed of darkness looks like, while the blonde said he heard that these seeds dominate humans' minds and turn them into demon beasts, and usually those born with it either die at birth or are sent to the root forest. Then Helmut understood why Diren had said that before, because as long as he has the seed, he'll have to fight other humans, and the reason he learned this was to suppress the seed inside him, and even now without his vis, he has to hide as much as possible that he possesses a seed. Until the blonde went to look at one of the beast's ugly faces, but at that moment it grabbed his neck, and Helmut only used a quick draw to cut the beast in half, and with that, he ended up feeling a strange sensation, while Tanya herself noticed something in that sword draw. After the night, he was training because his vis finally returned, and anyway now he'll be able to recover the amount he had before in just three days, so he continued his sword training. Until he felt something strange approaching and when he went to see, it was that annoying guy who arrived saying it's dangerous to walk alone because now he won't have help like last time and so he'll receive a lesson. Helmut just asked if he's serious that he came here just to do something ridiculous like that, then he just broke the bandage that was wrapped around his arm because he's already 100% healed and came punching Helmut, who just held it with his hands, leaving the guy on his knees, because apparently he needs to learn his place. But refusing to accept it, the guy let go of his hand and pulled the sword up, but it was useless. Helmut just drew his sword and passed cutting the guy's legs, and if they leave him here like this he'll probably die, but at that moment his mind was trying to be taken over by the killing intent of the seed, and he just hit his chest to control it because of the time he spent without using this. When he calmed down and went to look, the guy fled dragging himself, wondering how a nobody can use this. But ahead what awaited him wasn't very good and when Helmut found him it was that monster leader again who crushed that annoying guy. Helmut used this on his sword to fight, and the monster ended up running away, until behind them, the people arrived asking who was there, and then Helmut had to tell what happened because Caleb, who was following him, was killed by the demon beast. One of his leaders apologized because, whether they like it or not, he was also in danger, but Tanya came saying that apologies aren't enough since Helmut almost died even though they knew what that annoying guy was doing, the other one just tells her to watch her words because that was her brother, but flatly she said that if he had supervised properly, none of this would have happened, and so old Mal's arrived in front saying it's enough because they need to organize themselves, and since they can't do anything about the dead, as compensation, Helmut will receive payment from that mercenary who died, since now they need to think of a way to deal with the demon beast safely because three people have already died from the group. After that, Helmut ended up getting a scolding from Tanya saying that he shouldn't walk alone from now on, and that feeling he felt in her words ended up reminding him of how Diren treated him. And so the next day they continued the journey within the forest fighting against the demon beasts, and at the end of the day, the guys were all finished because they had to fight all day, since in the current situation the monsters are only coming after his squad because the Tarek squad hardly fought today. So at night in the carriage, old Millis is saying for Tarek to help the other squad in the rear guard, but he disagrees with this idea because instead of safety, it's better to seek efficiency, and it's very simple, while the face squad fights the monsters, the rest quickly leaves the forest. So Millis asked if they have no honor for doing this, but the important thing in this place is survival, since this beast can kill all of them, and so it's just waiting for them to tire out to attack, and that would be a simple and efficient solution. The next day, the face squad was riding in the rear guard as usual until the other squad rushed off because the demon beasts appeared. 
So the captain realizes they've been abandoned here, while Helmut, pensive, thinks it's time to act. And then when they all came charging, they started the battle, but it's still tough because there are many monsters, and Helmut seeing this just thinks these people shouldn't die here. So he tells them to keep what they're about to see here a secret, and thus, using his vis, he jumped cutting from all sides until none of these monsters were left standing. And when he passed the last one, everyone was amazed because the beast is incredibly strong, and Helmut just says his body has recovered, and then Tanya realizes that what she saw the other time was true, and even the captain is surprised because he can't manifest his vis that way either. Anyway, Helmut says he'll stay with them until they leave the forest. As they were tracking the Tarek guys, they seemed to have run through the forest all night, but Helmut just felt something because there was a battle happening up ahead, and at the speed they're going, it'll take about an hour for them to arrive, so they went trying to save the idiots. In the other group, they were struggling to defeat the beasts until their chief arrived, and so they're screwed. So the blue-haired one came telling the other they should flee because this way, everyone will die, and if they flee now, all witnesses will disappear, and their reputation will be safe, and so the two just both saying scatter, while old Millis screwed up because the beasts started grabbing everyone from inside the carriage. Until at that moment Helmut arrived with his sword sending the monster flying, since some time ago the captain had told him to come to the front and see how the situation was, and since his vis is back he can also defeat this monster. But as he passed cutting the monster, he realized that this is the strongest one he's encountered since leaving the forest and so we can't let our guard down, so now it was just a brawl from both sides until the monster started absorbing the energy from the other dead ones, and now he's likely to be stronger than before, so he needs to go all out to end this before the squad arrives, so the fight continued from all sides. Until when the monster jumped up he remembered this attack pattern, the same as the Naho snake, and so he just jumped along with it making a big cut on the monster. And when the guys arrived he had already devastated everything, and luckily old Millis was still alive in the middle of the carriage, so when he woke up he thought he was in the afterlife saying he was sorry because he was threatened by the Tarek guys, but in the end, he wasn't dead yet and the demon beast was defeated. So now it's time to discuss finances because they want 80% of the profit for everything that happened, even because they still saved Millis in the end and so he ended up agreeing while the captain asks what kind of thing they're carrying. In fact, the client they need to find is the great mage Antiol, and the origin of the merchandise they're transporting is from the Lumen Temple, and as they already know the power of the temple surpasses people's imagination, since the group that defeated the demon king thousands of years ago are no longer the same as before because now they are gathering sacrifices and power in the name of protection, and most kingdoms have submitted to them, but they are unable to control that mage. In the midst of the conflict, the mage found an item in the temple and wanted to research it, but if they find out that the merchant association passed this item to him, the association will be destroyed, since the temple is very powerful, and they are only doing this because that mage saved their leader before and so they owe him this favor. And so Helmut went to ask if this mage was so famous, but there are even stories that he almost destroyed a divine barrier of the temple, and that's when he stopped to think if a mage like him could remove this seed from him. So now, some time later, they finally left the territory of the beasts. The captain gave Helmut a pill to help with his recovery of sight, while thanking him for saving his squadron, as without him, they would all be dead. So, the next day, they finally arrived in the marked area. The captain still didn't understand why it was literally in the middle of nowhere, there was no village, road, or anything of the sort. According to the old Millis, it's exactly in this place that they will carry the items to Antile's house. Instead of trying to explain this, he decides to show using this necklace. When he placed it in the middle of the tree, everything began to exude energy because it's magic and they are traveling through space. The captain is impressed, as it's beyond imagination. Helmut asks if this couldn't be an illusion, but the temperature is dropping, as they are crossing a long distance. Ahead, they finally spot someone, the Archmage Antiol, who is welcoming the guests of the Merchant Association. As everything arrived in order, he thanks, and asks if people died, as there are several traces of life force in the carriage. Old Millis says that only a third of the members managed to get there, as they fought against a giant beast. Interested, Antiol asked where the corpse is, but Millis informed that they already processed his body, so, if he wants to buy, it's available. The mage soon offers 150,000 marks, leaving the group surprised, as it's a lot of money. According to one of the men who was here, he heard that archmages possess immense wealth. Antiol just instructs them to unload the carriage, as he won't need it. Looking at him, Helmut realizes that, even though he has a different power than the dark mage he knew, he is strong. When Antiol looks at Helmut, he comments on how mages can see the truth that no one knows. Helmut warns him to be careful. Then, Antiol uses a barrier magic that separates them from the outside world, demonstrating respect for hidden truths. He swears by his mage name, drawing attention to the chains emanating from him, the so-called mage's oath, a promise that, if broken, results in the loss of a large amount of mana. Now, he instructs the special boy to ask what he wants to know. As Helmut saw that he is not a dark mage to be trusted, he decides to ask only one thing. 
But without hesitation, Antiol asks if it has something to do with the Seed of Darkness. Indeed, that's it, as he wants to know how to remove it. Antiol sincerely says that it's impossible because the Seed of Darkness has a direct connection with his life. This seed possesses the power of a demon, which rarely resides in babies who should have died but are revived by the seed itself. Therefore, this thing must live until the death of the host. Helmut is surprised because he expected an archmage to be able to solve this, but Antiel is just a mage, not a god, and it's the first time he's seen someone controlling his seed. Normally, the seed demands demonic energy from the host, and the more one resists, the more the mind is devoured until, in the end, it goes mad and turns into something akin to demon beasts. His case is very unique because theoretically he can suppress this power using mana or vis. Both powers require talent and time. So, the idea that he trained his vis while offering the minimum demonic energy to keep the seed from going insane is very interesting. He says that even for priests it's difficult to find traces of the seed unless they examine his body directly. Even he, an archmage, could only see it because it reacted to the large amount of demonic energy present there. Currently, it can be seen that he doesn't have a bright future, even though he will become very strong over time, if he can avoid the attention of the temple. But eventually, like all others, the seed can devour him, and with that, his sword will destroy this world, for that is the fate of all who possess the seed. However, Helmut says that won't happen because he is human. And then Antiel laughs, explaining that just as humans dictate destiny, they can also change it. He says he will observe the boy because if he cannot overcome this, he will have to stop him when the day comes. After all this, Helmut ends up earning money for the work he did with the members and asks if a bag found in the luggage is also his, as he found it among them, but it didn't belong to any of the members. This bag contains the things he brought from the forest, so Helmut thanks them. While the captain says he didn't hand it over earlier because he forgot, he also thanks Helmut, calling him the hero of the mission. Finn arrives all excited talking about showing the mercenaries headquarters, but Helmut decides not to go. Tanya offers him to continue using the squadron certificate because now he has something more important to do. Helmut grabs his luggage and starts to leave while everyone says goodbye to him. The captain says that when he needs a squadron, just call anytime. Helmut then thinks that a part of his heart is hurting, just like when he left Diren and Ilaga. He now finds himself facing the threat of demon beasts and the seed is absorbing more and more energy as it did in the forest. The only way is for him to become stronger to the point where not even the seed can control him. Elsewhere, someone comments that they wouldn't have accepted the request if they knew it would be so dangerous. But what matters is that they are alive and can rebuild Tarek without anyone knowing what happened. However, they begin to hear a familiar voice, it's the captain, Tanya, and the other members passing through the door. The two become worried because they survived, and when Finn looks to the side, he no longer sees anyone at the window table. Meanwhile, they are worried because they should have personally killed that squadron. One of them is certain that it's only a matter of time before their actions reach the guild. So, their Tarek group heads towards obscurity, but the blue-haired rebel insists they continue, as they are rank 2, and instead of starving, the only alternative is to steal. At sunset, Helmut is inside a bar thinking that he needs to find some clue about this necklace, as he's just been traveling through random villages in the past few days. He won't always encounter good people like those, but at least the money he earned from the captain was practically double what Diren left for him. Until now, he realized there was a letter inside, and seeing that handwriting, it's certainly from Dai Ren, as before taking his last breaths, he wrote a letter saying that if he's reading this, his life has come to an end and it also means that he can leave the forest. Probably, he will have trouble adjusting to the outside world because he lived in the forest and his time must be really running out to worry about Helmut. Getting straight to the point, if he's traveling without a goal in mind, he should try to go to Baden, a place called the Greta Academy, where children his age go. There, he can learn more about being human as peasants and nobles are treated the same. And of course, he can't enroll himself. So, he should find a man named Ethan Kudrum and show him the sword he gave, Ethan will know he is his disciple, and as they made an oath, this guy will help him. Finally, the human world may be a dangerous place where strength can't solve all problems, but as he managed to overcome his tough training, he will believe that Helmut will pass this test, and therefore, be careful, young one. Seeing the shaky letters, Diren was already almost out of strength to write, so Helmut already feels grateful because his fate is set. At that moment, the waiter arrives bringing all the food he ordered, saying that it totals 15 marks. So, he quickly takes out a coin from the bag, which surprises the waiter, as it's a thousand mark coin, while he says he feels like sleeping there and to use it to pay for everything. At this moment, one of the guys, who was already drunk, takes a glance and when Helmut was thinking about the money he earned, he comes to the table saying that the kid is quite rich, and two more arrive asking to borrow 20,000 marks for them to have a few drinks. But, straight up, Helmut refuses, so the stressed out guys already want to fight. And if it's a fight they wanted, it's a fight they got, as Helmut easily defeats them. 
The drunkard asks who the hell he is, but Helmut just identifies himself as a mercenary and tells him to get out of here. Then, the startled waiter says he needs to leave the city immediately because he received a declaration of war from the Black Eagles, who are thugs that dominate the underworld and kill anyone for money. Helmut realizes he's gotten into a bigger situation than he expected and thinks about luring the guys to another place. While the still-dazed waiter says he needs to flee, Helmut instructs him to say he went to the forest and that he'll also return, so they should leave the room ready. At night, in an alley, they discuss if he will really do this, until one of them comes running saying he found out where he is, in the forest behind the inn. They decide to hunt Helmut to show that the Black Eagles are scarier than anything else. Within the forest, Helmut was thinking he learned in the squadron that there are many humans who act like beasts, and on the other hand, there are humans who protect each other. And that's why humans are really complicated. Also, remembering what Diren said that problems can't be solved only with strength, but at this moment, that's the only way he can solve problems. One thing he realized is that humans who act like demon beasts need to be treated as such, and since they all arrived armed, he can send everyone to hell, right? So, afterwards, Helmut left, jumping from branch to branch, thinking they are weaker than Tanya. Anyway, he will start moving when the sun rises, and so, he will return to the inn and rest a bit. Only, at that moment, the seed started to react, and he already fell to the ground wondering why this, since he didn't kill demon beasts, but humans. The fact that this happened means that killing someone makes the seed grow. So, this ends up being a big problem because if they discover the massacre he did, other humans will chase him, and since he can't kill his opponents, he will have to avoid them as much as possible. That's why he needs to go to the academy soon. And then, one of the ninja guys came reporting that they all died, and since that's the case, the bearded one just says to continue with the plan. Until another crazy one showed up saying they arrived, and those are the same rank 2 guys who fled the battle and had their reputation destroyed. The bearded one comes saying he appreciates strong people wanting to enter, but now they don't let anyone in here without certain conditions. Even though he's not doubting their abilities, things here are different because they do a lot of illegal things. So, if they mess up the job because of moral sense, it's going to be problematic. And so, he needs something to prove that they won't do that. He goes through a little trouble because last night, five of his subordinates disappeared, and from what they found out, they were killed by just one mercenary. And judging by the bodies, they were killed in one blow, and there were no traces of any weapons. The description of the guy who did this is that he has black hair and eyes, looking to be around 15 years old. If they finish this job, they can join the Black Eagles. So, the guy with the blue hair went straight to the point, asking where he is, and according to reports, he was at the inn in a neighboring village, and since not much time has passed, he shouldn't be far. Then, in another city, Helmut ended up thinking about taking on a mission to move without attracting attention, and when he entered, the attendant welcomed him, asking what brings him there. And he's there, of course, to take on a mission. Since he's registered with the Mercenaries Guild, there's no problem at all. So, she asks what kind of mission he wants, and actually, Helmut says the reward doesn't matter, he wants one that's on the way to Baden. And since Baden is a metropolis, there are many people wanting to go there, so it will be easy to find an escort or transport mission. So, she presents an escort mission for a noble lady, but she has one condition, the mercenary must have the appearance of the ideal type of noble lady. And that's why Helmut is perfect for this mission. After taking the mission, he stopped by the store, thinking the woman said he should make a great impression, so he should dress better. Luckily, he's already halfway there because of his handsome face, so to accept this mission, he just needs new clothes. And so, in the store, the mustachioed man presents a bunch of pieces with that excitement, and Helmut, calm, asks how much it costs. And this piece here costs 2,000 marks, while the mission reward is only 800, more unfair than anything. Arriving at the guild, even the attendant liked our man Helmut's new look, saying he looks handsome in that outfit. And he's just there, I'm not dear, I'm Helmut, while the woman just let slip because he was too good looking. Just as she was saying he was perfect for this mission, a man from the Zaringer house arrived, because he came to check on the mercenary who accepted the mission, so he calls Helmut. Outside, while someone was lurking, the guy came saying his name is Gilton, the butler of the Zaringer house, and in the end he said that transport and escort aren't very different, since in escorting you must protect a person instead of an item, and if it's difficult, just follow the knights and they will give more money once the mission is completed. So, they enter a place which is the inn where the Marquis's daughter is staying, then he presents another knight named Cedric, until in the young lady, she was all needy at the table with a certain Lord Aaliyah, and at that moment the butler arrived presenting the new hired mercenary, but the woman didn't pay much attention and went to pay attention to Lord Aaliyah, while he says they should leave soon and so he will rest a little. 
So just seeing that guy passing by, Helmut already found it kind of strange because there's something different about him. So the lady also started going back to Lord Aaliyah, while Helmut asks if this Aaliyah is a mercenary too. But no, he's just a guest of the lady and also well known at the Greta Academy. And according to the butler, the lady will conduct entrance evaluations to join the academy. And since they only have two hours now, Helmut should prepare and get a horse from the stable. And so, after being calm on the horse, Helmut remembers that it wasn't quite like that in the stable because the tantrum that this horse threw, my god, until up ahead the lady was calling Lord Aaliyah to enter the carriage, and seeing this, Helmut even understood why he seems to be a mage, and that explains why he seemed strange from the beginning, but we still don't know what kind of magic it is or why he cast the spell on himself. And in the carriage, the lady asks if he's really the best in the class in magic, and he is, while she kept saying she was nervous for the exam, and he's just there, it will be alright, because she was trying every way to get him to teach her, but in the end he says he will look for someone specialized in the admission exam to help, and tells her to rest a bit because it will be a long journey. Until in the masked ones, the guy who was lurking came telling everything that happened and that Helmut accepted a mission, but the problem is that there are knights belonging to a nobleman and so things might get bad, and that's why it's only to try to eliminate the scumbag alone, because that's the philosophy of the Black Eagles, they must ensure the death of their enemy by cutting piece by piece, and we only hope that everyone here has the same ideal, so the blue-haired one says of course. What he just said will be put into practice now, and in the escort group the lady was complaining if there wasn't a better inn to spend the night. But in this region, there's only this type of inn and it will be only this time. While in the forest, Helmut was training thinking that his vis is much better compared to when he was in the forest, and the question remains, will he be able to focus on his training at Greta Academy and more importantly, find some clues about the seed? Until, on the brink of night, he managed to hear some noise and was looking for what it was, since it was actually a bird controlled by Lord Aaliyah, who also found him strange and went to take a look, because he has seen many skilled mercenaries, but it's rare to see such a young one at rank 3. Until the young lady arrives knocking on the door, saying she knows he's not asleep, but in the end, the maids ended up taking our crazy girl away. The next day, they rode until it was lunchtime, so they stopped the carriage near a lake and rested to eat, while the mercenaries in the back were complaining because the lady was getting the finest food, and they were eating a piece of bread and filling their stomachs with water, and Helmut thinking he missed Finn's food. Until he noticed there was something odd about this water, and it was somewhat sweet, could it be the taste of poison? Because everyone is drinking the same water and is fine, but some are starting to doze off, and even the butler noticed the young lady is sleeping talking to herself, and he also fell asleep, now not only him but all the other servants became drowsy, and so everyone fell asleep and Helmut poured out the water because they are approaching, thinking everyone is unconscious because the sleeping potion was their idea. But when they arrived there, he was awake, so the guys didn't understand anything and those two realized it was the mercenary from that transport mission, and Helmut not being foolish starts calling them traitors for fleeing the mission, and that's when the guys got pissed saying that doesn't matter because now he's the prey, so it's time to hunt. But at that moment the blue-haired one just blocked an attack, because Lord Aaliyah appeared saying that if he doesn't want to die it's better to lower that sword and get out of here, and as there was another insomniac intruder, the blue-haired one pointed the sword at the other asking if it was him who did it because there's a mage among them, so he just gave the other a piece of his mind telling him to shut up and clean up the mess he made, since now he will have a little chat with that brat, and he was coming beating his swords. While the bearded one says the mage didn't need to move because it would be a painless death, but he just says that a silent mage is a dead mage. So, over at Helmet, he fought through the forest with the blue-haired guy, thinking he was lucky that mage didn't sleep, and at that moment the blue guy sent a sword slash through the air, thinking he had already defeated Helmet, but behind that smoke he was there calm, because this is just the beginning, and he thanks the blue for following him here, as this will be his end because he is not a worthy person, and then he went crazy that Helmet was using Vis and tried to attack. But he dodged and jumped up, landing on the traitor's face, and after that, the guy was lying on the ground asking how a brat can use Vis, then he just got one on the head with Helmut saying he will let him live, while the guy tells him to just kill him because it's better than being humiliated, but he fled and left all his companions, and so nothing is more humiliating than that, so live with that humiliation. Then the guy laughed like crazy back there while Helmut remembered that mage who stayed behind, and he himself left the candidates all broken while summoning more magic. And then the bearded one came forward, but he took a blast of magic right in the face and was thrown against the stone with the mage telling them not to move, because now he used a restraining magic trapping everyone. But in the meantime, the bearded one took advantage and fled, all destroyed wondering when things started to go wrong like this, until he saw Helmut passing by without a scratch, and that means he must have defeated the blue-haired one. So when he reached the carriage, the mage just sent a rope for him to tie everyone up, and when they arrive in the city, they will throw them in jail. That's when Helmut remembered that there is a place Diren mentioned where people who did something wrong stay, so he shouldn't have let those scoundrels escape, but at that moment the mage asks how he didn't faint, and he actually hadn't drunk the water from that lake. 
And then the mage suddenly sends an attack past his head while Helmut asks why he didn't faint either, because he saw the mage drinking the water, and since he is a mage, he purified that water before drinking. So Helmut asks if it's because of the magic surrounding his body, then he got a bit scared because he could see, but actually it's the opposite because he can feel and he just didn't do anything because he wasn't that curious and it's not his problem. And after all that, the butler was thanking because he was indebted to the mage, but he says he just did what he should and that mercenary also helped a lot, and since that's the case, the butler was saying he would give a bigger reward, but at that moment the young lady came grabbing Aaliyah, saying that this would be destiny because he saved her, so the crazy one starts saying she would pay with her life and would do anything, but the thing she has to do is shut her mouth because he is already engaged to someone and will marry as soon as he graduates from the academy. And then the woman broke down and started crying while the knights decided to start moving, until a while later they managed to reach the city without any problem, and arriving there the butler came handing over the reward for the mission, 10,000 marks as a gratitude gift for saving them. So Helmut just leaves thanking the mage for helping him, because now it's time to enter the academy. And inside the city, he already realizes it's different from the villages he visited because it's very large, until he reached the Greta Academy where he has to find that man, Ethan Kudrow, and when he arrived at the table he tells the attendant that he is looking for this man. And this guy he's looking for is the swordsman instructor. So Helmut gave the name and the woman led him to the room, when he arrived there the woman asked him to wait a little and went using magic on the door, while he thought he's curious to meet the human Diren mentioned. So inside, the man says he's never heard of him and asks what he's doing here, and just by being there in front of him, he realizes he's not as strong as Dai Ren, but of all the swordsmen he's seen, he's the strongest. So Helmut took out the sword and showed it to him, saying he would know if he looked at this sword, and when he took a look, it looked like a poorly made sword but if you focus you can see that it must be one of the best swords. And there's only one person who could do this, Dai Ren de Pert. Then he was shocked asking if he was still alive, but Helmut says he died recently. And knowing this, the guy already put his hand on his head saying it's been 20 years since he disappeared and he had sworn to reward Dai Ren for saving his life. So, as Helmut is holding this sword, it means he was Dai Ren's last apprentice, and that's why he asks why he's here. And in fact, he came here to enter Greta Academy, and that's when he understood why Dai Ren had sent him here, since maybe he needed a guardian, and judging by the current state, Helmut must be around 14 years old. So, let's just assume he's 15 and let's take the test as if he were a transferred student, but if he reveals the fact of being the legendary swordsman's apprentice, he'll be transferred immediately. And that's when Helmut realized something because Dai Ren was in the root forest but, for the outside world, he disappeared and not even an acquaintance knew about it, and so someone must have sent Dai Ren there and hid it from everyone, and if someone finds out that his apprentice is in the human world, he won't be able to get rid of the seed of darkness and will be sent back. So, he says he can't reveal everything, but if someone finds out he's an apprentice, Helmut could die, and he'll talk about it all when the time comes. He accepted, saying Helmut can ask for anything he needs and will also take care of the documents for him to take the transfer test, and now he also wants to check Helmut's skill level. So, he went to the underground training room and grabbed a wooden sword, because if he can cut through this tree made of white vine, the most resistant, he'll be nothing short of impressive, and this kid doesn't seem like an ordinary person because he's already using this. So he just prepared and cut through the middle of that tree, and therefore, if he maintains this level, his entry is more than guaranteed, and seeing this, he just has to pass the theoretical test and he's there without even understanding what a theoretical test is, and that's when the disappointment started because he was terrible, but worse than everything, and not even a 5-year-old child would get such a score. But since there are 10 days left for the exam, he needs to improve the score quickly, and since Ethan is one of the members, he is not allowed to tutor any candidate, and so they are in a terrible situation. And that's when Helmut remembered that Mage Aaliyah was famous for being elite in the academy, and according to Ethan, Aaliyah enrolled in the highest position in his class with a perfect score, and since he is so good, Helmut says he will ask for help from this student while Ethan was not understanding anything in the room. So Helmut went to ask Aaliyah to be his tutor, but the guy rejected it in every way, saying he wouldn't accept being the tutor of a dumb swordsman and tells him to study on his own. And Helmut down there saying he needs to pass and they said he's the best, and he's not asking for this for free, he will pay for it. So he even laughs asking how much money a mercenary has, and Helmut, who doesn't understand money, just asks how much he wants. Then the angry guy says he accepts for 100,000 marks paid up front with no installments, and Helmut just responds with a okay and says he will prepare to start tomorrow, while he's there crazy because he accepted even though it was a lot, a lot of money. And in the end, they agree to meet tomorrow at this place so Helmut should prepare. So Helmut went while the green-haired guy was saying how fascinating it is that Aaliyah has a friend, and the next day he was already ready to study, let's go, and the other one there wow, the guy really came, while he brought exactly 100,000 marks. Then Aaliyah says to wait here and he'll be back soon. So the only thing missing is for the guy to scam us, right? But at least he didn't, right, 
he came back and they went to study at the library. And in the time Helmut was there focused, Aliyah was thinking that he is more troublesome than he seems, because his ability to learn things is surreal. And that's why he asks if Helmut didn't live his whole life in a forest. While in his thoughts Helmut realized from before that Aliyah is not a normal person and that's why he needs to be careful. So he asks why this question, but it was based on his focus being very good besides his memorization, and even with all that he doesn't even have the basic knowledge about society because his answers were the worst possible. And as he is being taught by the best student in the academy, he needs to pass this no matter what, because if not it will end up tarnishing his honor. So at night they were still there in the library studying, well if a classmate stole something from you, what would you do? And he there, oh I'd steal it back. And then Aaliyah kept explaining until Helmut realized that humans are really that difficult, and this way after good and good two weeks have passed and we are in the academy library where the girls were already crying over Lord Aaliyah while rumors circulated that he was teaching a certain person. And then when Helmut arrived he already asked if he did well on the test because in the practical ones there probably won't be any problem. So he's leaving wishing good luck on the next tests and Helmut thanking because now only the practical test is left. So now we're in the fencing arts department in the waiting room and it was already full of people chatting and waiting for their test while some crazy guy approached Helmut introducing himself as the second son of the Rubel family and asking what his name is. So Helmut immediately asks why the blonde is talking to him, and actually, he says he's just trying to make friends, right? So he goes there and says he's Helmut, while the guy asks what his last name is to know which family he belongs to, only that in fact family is what he doesn't have. Even though the only family he has on that necklace is that Margaret Irene, but still he says he has no family. So the blonde guy closed his face because then he's a commoner, and as soon as that everyone started making fun of him, until one of the knights came telling the worms to speak quietly because in 5 minutes they will explain how the test will work, and while the blonde guy was leaving he still stopped saying that Helmut should bow his head to people above his class, and he, as always, serene, doing nothing. A while later they were explaining that the test will be done in groups and divided into two stages, and when they said that Helmut already felt everyone staring at him because this place is different from the Roots Forest, since there can be monsters or humans, each one will always be in a part of the pyramid, although in the human world being strong is not enough because it seems that family is also important. Then the instructor came calling the last group to enter the room, and inside the first test was to cut the trunk of the black wood, and for that, they must use a wooden sword. And the time for them to do this is 5 minutes. So Helmut took it thinking this is the easiest thing possible to do. And then he just used the vis and went for it, a cut splitting the wood in half, and in this the guy was amazed because even he, a supervisor, had to strike several times to cut the trunk, but this was just one hell of a cut. And when Helmut got back to the room, that disgusting guy was already trying to bother him again, only now it's time to explain the next stage of the test because this is a duel to be observed by the instructors for 8 minutes, and the opponents will be decided randomly and the kids can be accepted whether they win or not because this is just a test. And that's when the disgusting guy opened his mouth saying it's unfair because whoever gets the commoner will pass immediately, while Helmut is pissed off with this annoying human he was almost getting into a fight with him, until the instructor came calling number 29 Helmut and number 8 Andro. And well, inside the arena, the two candidates were standing while one of the instructors asks Ethan if this is the candidate he recommended, and since this is the first time he recommended someone he must be very talented. So the instructor came saying that the duel time is 8 minutes divided into 2 rounds of 4, and the goal of this is not to win but to show your skills, and as soon as the duel begins, while Helmut's opponent thought he heard that he's a commoner and even though he cut the tree he must not have had decent training, so he's going to get a beating and fall to the ground just like what just happened. Then the instructor doesn't even know what to do because number 8 is incapacitated, furious because he lost to a commoner, and the instructors are impressed with all of Helmut's skill because it's a huge difference compared to the other boys, but since the test is meant to assess everyone's strength, it'll be kinda lame to define the level if it continues like this. So Ethan tells Helmut that instead of defeating the opponent, he could duel as if he were teaching fencing to him, and for candidate Andrus, he tells him to set aside status and family because he'll benefit from fighting someone who is already far ahead in skill, and then he agrees but says he has his pride and so won't go down so easily. But all that happened was a clash of swords with Helmut pointing out all of his opponent's mistakes, the same thing Dai Ren used to do with him a long time ago, so it was like a teacher instructing a student, while Ethan remembered that some time ago he was about to die to a beast, but was saved by Dai Ren, and he saw that same person in Helmut. After a week in Baden, Helmut was going to the mercenaries guild, and the attendant asks if he wants to place an order, but he actually just came to take a mission, and he had said that before because he thought Helmut Heartthrob was from some renowned family. And when it was his turn to choose the type of request he remembers Ethan's reaction when he said he paid 100,000 marks for Aaliyah to teach him, so he started learning about finances, and here in the guild he wanted a request that he could complete by next month with a high reward. So the attendant found one with a very strange location, which is at the Greta Academy. 
And on the flyer, there was a report of a ghost appearing at the academy, and according to these reports, it appears at night scaring people, so the request was to identify and eliminate this ghost. While he was walking around the academy, the green-haired boy came calling him Aaliyah's protege, because it's the first time Aaliyah, the idol of the magic department, went out with someone before, so their relationship became gossip. And he says he's a slightly different mage, and summons some kind of crazy spirit that flies towards Helmet, which ended up punching the poor thing who pouted while the other laughed a lot finding it funny because this thing is a light spirit, Rattan. He doesn't hurt anyone, but even if he did, he couldn't physically block because spirits don't have a physical body, and only some mages can control him. And the green-haired guy is one of those mages named Sion, the only elemental mage of the Greta Academy. So Helma just says okay, nice to meet you, and starts to leave, saying he's in the middle of an errand. And as it's an errand within the academy, Sion asks if that's about the academy's ghost, and he knows about it because he was quite interested in that rumor and asks if Helmut wants help. So, in the end, it turned out that they were both inside the academy at night using the poor light spirit, Rattan. Then they walked through the rooms while Sion said that apart from those summoned with black magic, it's not so dangerous. At that moment, Helmut went ahead, suggesting they split up here for a more efficient way to find this so-called ghost, while the other didn't mind and went along with him. Until after looking through another room, Sion ended up getting startled by something because there was someone walking ahead. So Helmut was about to draw his sword, but when the figure approached, it was Aaliyah asking what these two are doing here, so they explained the whole thing about having a request at the guild regarding this academy's ghost, and Aaliyah is around because he also received a request. Then Sion gets excited about hunting ghosts together with all three of them, and as he agreed, they were in the room using an illusion magic that shows the entire structure of the academy, with Aaliyah saying that all the places where the ghost appeared have something in common, the fencing department. And it couldn't be a mage doing this because the time and voice for casting don't match. So Helmut says that ghosts can't receive physical attacks because he had talked before with Ethan, who told him some things, and now, thinking back, Helmut is finally having a civilized conversation because before he was always reprimanded by Alaga or got an earful from Diren. The thing is, the three of them here have different knowledge, but together they can find the answer bit by bit, so that's how a conversation should be, right? Keeping that in mind, Aaliyah suggests that Helmut tries to use the sword with this on the ghost if they find it, until after a while, Sion went to rest. Helmut asks Aaliyah where he can find a spirit, but as he's an elemental mage, he can't find a spirit, and thinking about it, they have someone here who noticed something and went running after a spirit, so the two of them followed Sion, while Helmut asked if he knew what a spirit was from the beginning. And that's actually what it was, and using Sion to search was the only way he found to catch this thing, until ahead, Aaliyah used a search magic showing footprints on the ground where Sion went, and following that would lead exactly to the training field of the fencing department. While Aaliyah explained that spirits seek quiet places to hide and make their base, it was then that Helmut remembered Ethan's training field, which was right nearby, a place where hardly anyone went and was quiet. So they entered, and it must be here because Aaliyah started to sense something, and that's when our smart guy asked if he really received a request. But actually, he doesn't like the fact that there's only one elemental mage in the academy, so he wants to capture this spirit and study it. Then Aaliyah used a silence spell to erase his presence, telling Helmut to help set a trap for the spirit. Until finally, the academy's ghost appeared ahead, and then Aaliyah went crazy trying to attack the ghost. And since Aaliyah used a ceiling spell in the field, it won't be able to move properly, so Helmut needs to weaken this monster. So if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel and comment what you thought, until next time, guys.